Hi, pretty lady. Ooh. Mm. Yeah, good morning. It's a sleepy Monday. waiting for people to join and now you're leaving <laughs> hi good morning everybody this is Brittany here with Jasmine Tiger at Big Cat Rescue here in Tampa Florida just want to give you guys some time to please share this and tag your friends and family just getting started. We've got Jasmine just getting a drink of water. I'm sure to surprise some lucky keeper today. <laughs> Good morning, Jessica. Hey, Angel. Hey, Cassie. Hey, Marcy. Hey, Bree. Good morning, Sophia and Patricia. Hey, Kathy and Jane. So, my goal is, she was just laying there in the sun and looked so pretty, and of course as soon as I started this up she got mobile, <laughs> but my goal is for us to go try to find Val, Miss Valentine. Today we are celebrating her honorary, what was guesstimated to be her seventh birthday today along with her one year rescue anniversary. So that means Val has lived here for a whole year now. I will be featuring Val all day on Instagram. So there's already been a post or two. Make sure you scroll through those. Just a little bit of a warning. There is some graphic images there because this poor girl was in real bad shape when she arrived here the day before Valentine's Day. And I do want to mention quickly that yesterday, um, two brand new eBay auctions for Big Cat Rescue went live, and one of them is Val. So Val Paw Prints. And for those of you that have been following us for several years, you should recognize the other Valentine's Day rehab that we had in the past. Um, she was an adult bobcat named Aphrodite, who was re-released back into the wild, so. Two chances to win some original paw prints. It's a nice chilly morning, low 60s. <laughs> I think tomorrow morning's supposed to be even colder, like we might see the 40s again just can't make up its mind. 40s to 80s. <laughs> so we're gonna try to see Val and then I will make my way back through. We'll try to say hello to Gilligan. Probably my small girl. Probably the bobcats down the strip here. But we'll go see if we can find Val first since it's her special day. If you guys want to sponsor Val, you guys can do that at bigcatrescue.biz. Almost there. And then it'll just come down to trying to find where she's at. Hopefully we can find her and then I can tell you guys her story. Oh, she has a nice pretty weed growing there. <laughs> okay, I do not think she's on this day. Of course, it's colder this morning. She could potentially be inside a den and then we definitely won't see her or hear her. But I definitely wanted to try. Hey, 
Is there a vow home? Can we see a vow on her special day? Oh, she might be inside of it again. Miss Vow! See that there's a little entrance down here below all these ferns so she could easily be in there of course they just had breakfast so take a quick scan in case she's somewhere else I mean she has no end to the amount of ferns that she can hide away in <laughs> So that's what you'll find funny about, oh, there she is. Oh, hi, honey. I see a face. There's a Miss Val face. Hi, honey. Oh, you were sneaking up, weren't you? Hi, babe. Happy birthday and happy rescue anniversary. Just calling it Val Day. It's Val's day. Yeah, it's your day. So Miss Val, short for Valentine, was rescued um, exactly a year ago. Do you want to tell your story or do you want me to? <laughs> I know. So poor sweet Val. I wish we could speak angry bobcat. I think I know what you're saying, but I want to tell your story. So our sweet Val here was rescued after being um, seen and shot by a farmer. I know, honey, you got some choice words for that, that person, huh? But in their defense, they were defending their livestock. And the reason Val was going after easy prey <laughs> was because she had ultimately definitely been probably struck by a vehicle at least once, if not twice. Um, completely shattered her front leg and it healed in like the most disturbing, curved, crunchy kind of a way. Um, Dr. Justin spent quite a bit of time trying to figure out whether he could save the limb by reconstructing it or if it would need amputated. So Jamie and I took Val to the Humane Society to see Dr. Justin a year ago. And it was ultimately decided that the leg needed to be removed. So of course you can't see <laughs> from this view, but our sweet Val only has three legs, two back legs and one front leg. I know, honey. And she has been doing amazing. Um, when we do see her out and about, she is absolutely capable of being um, <laughs> very quick. She also had a lot of broken, busted up teeth that required multiple root canals. The end of her tongue is split from trauma. And luckily her eye, her eye was a big concern when it first came in because it was, it basically didn't have a pupil. It was a very unique color. Um, you could definitely tell there was some head trauma there but she has not fussed with it or acted like it's causing any pain whatsoever. So um, we will just keep a close eye on it, sort of like um, our Zeusy, our Zeus tiger that at one point in time had um, an eye trauma that caused his eye to need to be removed. So as of right now, Val is thriving the best that she can. <laughs> she was not releasable, obviously. Um, she was estimated to be about six. That's why we're saying she's about seven years old today. She definitely wouldn't have been surviving much longer on her own. Can just still see those eyeballs. I know Val. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I know. 
my very goodness, did we overstay our welcome? <laughs> I know, sweetheart. I'm gonna bring you some, um, I'm gonna bring you some enrichment. We don't know what you like, but we still offer it to you. <laughs> well, thank you very much to anybody who's going to donate on her Facebook post today or sponsor her at bigcatrescue.biz. There is also a warrior princess Val design at bigcatrescue.biz as well. Hi, sweetheart. All right, we're going to go. Thank you for your time. So we're very glad that we were at least able to, you know, take away some of the painful aspects of her survival. And now she no longer needs to scrape and scrimp uh, to survive in the wild and feed herself because she gets a meal every single day. All right, well, let's go see some of her neighbors that will be a little more happy to see us. <laughs> All right, so I know a lot of people have been asking about Gilligan. He is right over here in these ferns as well. So let me just pop over here. Mr. Gilligan. Gotta get the gate closed. handsome man. This is your kind of weather, isn't it, Bob? Hi, cutie pie. This is the best kind of weather for our Gilligan. Nice and cool. Nice and cool. Nice and fluffy. So this is Gil. Gilligan is a Canada Lynx. We just saw Val, who is a bobcat. They are cousins, <laughs> closely related, but different. Depending on region, kind of decides how big or how small, how fluffy and how spotted. Mr. Gilligan, I love you, sir. Yeah, you gonna eat very good for me tonight for PM meds? Yeah. What a good sir. So with Gilligan, we've been debating whether his senses are working um, like they used to, whether it's um, visual or hearing or sense of smell. Cause sometimes he'll put something right in front of him and he doesn't seem to know it's there. And so we're always really cautious when we approach him. We don't want to scare him. Last week um, at meds time, I kept trying to put the plate of food right next to him and he'd just walk right over it. And it wasn't until I basically used a long stick and I put a piece of meat on the end and I kind of booped his little nose with it. And then he was like, oh, food. And then he ate really well. So I'm wondering if it's more of a visual thing, but he's found himself a very nice sunshine spot. It's so sunny. Yeah, he looks like he's ready to flop. Are you ready to flop over? Are you ready to flop? You're like halfway there. You're like halfway there, bubs. Gilligan's in his teens. Uh oh, I hear a golf cart. Hi, I still here. I'm still here. You 
you're such a best boy. You are such a best boy. So yeah, anybody who watched the big game yesterday, <laughs> you know the Duchess got it wrong. <laughs> I'm very happy for Afton. I texted her immediately and I was like, Mark and I are really happy for you, but we need to fire Duchess. <laughs> She's picked three times and gotten it right once and wrong twice. So I'm like, it might be time for somebody new. Used to be Kali. Kali was very good at picking, but her mobility has declined, and the last thing we need is her hurting herself trying to play with this giant enrichment. And we know Duchess really loves to destroy, so. <laughs> I just wanted the Eagles to win because I wanted Duchess to be correct. <laughs> Otherwise, I really didn't have any care. <laughs> I like watching for halftime and the commercials when it's a team that I'm not that into. Uh, Super Bowl Sunday is very nostalgic for Mark and I because when we were in the process of moving to Florida to come here uh, to Big Cat Rescue, we came down in February and stayed for like three nights in downtown St. Pete while we were searching for like an apartment to kind of be our landing spot. And it just happened to be that Sunday. And we went to like a little Italian restaurant that had it playing on the TV. And then when we went back to the room, it was Katy Perry's halftime show. And of course she's got some very cat related music and it felt like a good sign. And so whether we care about the teams or not, we tend to always watch. All right, sweet boy. That was a very good hangout. Let him get some official sleep. All right, let's just kind of wander down the, the bobcat strip here. It's basically Gilligan's the only lynx on this route, and then you've got Smalls and Filmo and Frankie and Shiloh and Moses and Bailey. So just work our way down. She was also in her ferns, but I don't know if she'll stay there. She was on this side. Hi, princess. Hi, sweetheart. There's my girl. There's my girl. Hi, pretty. Hi, pretty, pretty. This is Small's Bobcat. Most beautiful girl in the world. I'm wearing your shirt today. I'm wearing a Bobcat Girl shirt today. Little small girl. Oh, she's gonna go that way. All right, we gotta go back this way because that's a dead end. I'm sure she's gotta shake her booty at us for a little bit. Come in, I had to take the long way. I had to take the long way. Pretty princess. Pretty princess. Hi, sweetheart. How my girl? Did my girl enjoy her breakfast? Mm-hmm. All these nice people watching on this live are the ones that help feed you breakfast. pretty exciting. We've got like five or six brand new red shirt volunteers that have started over the last week. And it was really wonderful to see that there's a new husband and wife team joining. I love that. Obviously, Mark and I started and are still volunteering together, but you've got like Jen and Matt who have basically been here since day one. <laughs> you've got Rich and Beth Ann who have basically been here since day one. Yeah. 
it's very fun. New faces to see. What we really need is to get some people rolling for internships, probably this summer, which is gonna creep up fast. They're three month internships. Yeah. And you basically live on property and you are with the cats like basically 24 seven. <laughs> are you marking that as yours? Oh, I hear Manny. I hear Manny. We have a private tour out and about with Jenny as well. We've been closed to the public since March of 2020, and I can't believe we're almost approaching three years of being closed to the public. But we did start back up private donor tours and if you sponsor the cats, you can learn at what level gets you a tour. If you go to bigcatrescue.biz and look at the sponsorship kits. <laughs> you really want to mark that as yours. Since it's Monday, we will make our way down to Manny. I'll try to show you all the bobcats we can see along the way. And Manny can be our big finale. Sounds like potentially we might be moving Manny and the bobcats, Max and Marianne, potentially to switch their enclosures sooner than later. Marianne is the only bobcat that eluded us when we did our last big um, vaccine day. Hi. And so it's been talked about to have Dr. Justin come out sometime sooner than later. If we can catch Marianne, she can get vaccinated as she goes to her new home. And then after that, we ought to be able to leave that girl alone. <laughs> if you guys recall the day that they had to catch like five or six different cats. <laughs> All right, let's find a Filmo. Small girl, you gonna say hi to the tour? You better come say hi to the tour. Everyone needs to see your tushy. Everyone needs to see the tushy. Do you want me to stay with you? Will you be brave? You come on over, you can be brave. Brave girl. Yeah. They're over there talking to Frankie right now. Yes, I see everybody talking about the Super Bowl commercial with Joel McHale, one of the biggest idiots, in my opinion. He is the one that did the after show from Tiger King and tried to stir up all those cronies. And then you find him on a Super Bowl commercial holding a cougar cub. Hi, handsome. Oh my goodness. So hopefully everyone's reaching out to him and I think it's Fox telling them that that is just the dumbest idea. Hi, where are we going? <laughs> Hi, I know you're a wild one. Where are we going? It's all right, kiddo. It's okay, kiddo. This is Filmo, by the way. If you didn't know that by the official greeting and the curved back. Mr. Filmo Bobcat going on over to say hi to Smalls who is still sitting right there on the edge. Hi 
Thelmo, do you see small girl? She's right there. You really did not have to um, get up and, and leave your post there. That's his favorite place to hang out. But I think between me and a golf cart full of people, he was like, mm-mm. <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah, it's really unfortunate because I loved the show Community, and now I'm like, I can't support anything that man does. He has lost his way, and like everybody who thinks it's cool to have wild animals as pets or to take photos with them or to hold them or pet them, it's all about ego. It makes me really sad. He's like, okay, you can all go now. Yeah, you go hang out with Small Girl. Smalls is still over there against the side. He's going to go back up top. You coming back over? He's like, I'm going to lay right here and hide my face in these ferns. <laughs> Such a goofy boy. Let's go see a Frankie. Hi, Frankie. Hi, cute boy. Hi, my cute boy. How's this little fella? Hey, how's this little fella? This is Frankie Bobcat. So, so far we've seen three very different looking Bobcats between Val, who is a native Florida Bobcat Unless she walked herself down here from Georgia, I don't know. <laughs> Time to get some water. And then Smalls, who we believe is more of a northern bobcat, at least that is where she came from. She's also fluffier and much lighter in color. Filmo actually, Filmo looks a lot like Smalls and Dryden, I feel like. And I feel like they all might be more like sort of northern. Frankie, I'm not totally sure. He's a lot like Moses. He's that very reddish brown, so he's definitely probably more of a southern, but he's kind of fluffy too, so you don't know. He gets very fluffy fur. Very fluffy fur. He hasn't given up on second breakfast yet. Hi, kiddo. Can you say hi? I know I should probably go away from your feeding lockout. That's not helpful. That's not helpful. You already had breakfast. I know that this Thursday is flea treatment day. So all the cats will be getting brevecto. We do that quarterly. Hi, Shiloh. Are you boys getting along yet? I don't hear any out of control noises coming out of you. Hi, kiddo. And this is Shiloh, and Shiloh's huge. I think you're a very big northern bobcat. We know that Max Bobcat came from the Rhode Island area. So it wouldn't surprise me if that's similar to the region, maybe Shiloh. Maybe even more north than that. He is a big, big boy with lots of spots. It's very fluffy. So they seem to be settling in. I hope my boys at home can do that. <laughs> you guys, most of you that have followed us for a long time, you know who Colonel Mustard is. And he is, we actually call him Mushy now. He's, that's basically his name, but um, he's our little baby doll. Like all he wants to do is cuddle. And then we just rescued another feral out of the neighborhood that was in really bad shape. Got him all fixed up. His name, we call him Commander, and he's very aggressive. He's constantly attacking myself and Mark and Sarah, and 
we've been slowly trying to introduce him to Colonel and they did really great the first like three or four interactions and then all of a sudden in a split second he attacked Colonel scared the daylights out of me and him poor Colonel was scared and shaking and hiding and it all broke my heart so I've backed off on that idea for a little while <laughs> We did all the things we were supposed to. We've been slowly introducing each other's scent to them. They'd been face to face without being able to get to each other a few times. They've eaten meals near each other. And then out of nowhere, big clumps of fur getting ripped out. It was very scary. So I just saw there's a Moses. I was like, I just saw him. Where did he go? Hi, Moses. Hi, handsome guy. Hi, kiddo. Where's Miss Bailey? You gonna come get a drink of water out of Bailey's water? This is Moses. See, doesn't he look just like Frankie? You guys are so similar in color. Are you gonna go see Bailey? I see her now. Momo. Hi, cute boy. Moses is our oldest bobcat in his 20s now. He's doing pretty darn good though. And Miss Bailey also second oldest bobcat. They live together. And she was back there. Where'd she go? For once, she's not hiding in this palmetto, so I want to see if we can see her. Hi, Bailey. Hi, sweetheart. Can we show everybody your absolutely adorable smiley face? Hi, Bailey. Look at that pretty girl. Where's Momo? Where's Moses? Yeah, I believe Bailey's about, she's 19 or 20. I think we might have celebrated her 20th and Moses being, I think, 21. Oh, there he is. Yeah, I really had my hopes up for the boys because they they were bonking heads and everything. And I was like, oh, I saw lion brothers do that in the wild in Africa. And it was incredible that the boy lions, they march right up to each other. And you're like, oh, no, somebody is about to attack somebody else and then instead they just do really cute like bulp 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 sounds and they headbutt each other and that was happening and then out of nowhere attack <laughs> so Moses and Bailey just getting their after breakfast exercises hi sir hi kiddo you're such a good boy Momo <sighs> he's He's one of my operant boys, and so I think the stabilizer is like, is that food? No? No more food? Okay. Nice to see them up and moving. They really enjoy the cooler air. It's usually by now they're both tucked into a den or the palmetto stumps. <laughs> Right, Moses? You're walking pretty darn good, sir. Moses only has a couple toes on one of his back feet because he did actually have a cancerous mass and so they had to remove some area on his foot. So that was several years ago. And he's been doing pretty good. He's such a good boy. What about you, Miss Bales? 
I think you were one of our least sponsored cats this month, and I don't like that. Our older cats really need a lot of help. But people don't get to see you either, so that's not helpful. <laughs> you trying to be fast? Oh, there she goes. That's gonna, that is her usual spot, is right over there in that palmetto. I'm glad we caught her out and about today. That's awesome. Mr. Momo. <laughs> I'm basically a, an adult child. Um, <laughs> I was just thinking about the Lego movie and there's a song that gets stuck in my head constantly, which is the Everything is Awesome song, if anybody else is familiar with that. But I was just thinking that in my head about every day is precious <laughs> with, the, with these old guys. Right, kiddo? They're really out exploring today. Bailey's way far down there, still not tucked away. You guys like the cooler weather, huh? You guys really like that cooler weather. To our knowledge, Moses and Bailey are more native Florida bobcats. So along with Val and Frankie. Where are you going, buddy? You can't decide yet. You can't decide yet. Have you been hanging out with Alethea? Alethea is still in Funcation. She hangs out in the back section a lot when it's not time to eat breakfast. And these two have a really good view of anybody who's in Funcation. We're gonna get another Bailey drive by. Two little lovebirds just in time for Valentine's Day. Hi, Bales. I just want people to see your face. I know that it's after breakfast routine, so that usually involves grooming, pottying, and sleeping. But we're gonna take advantage of this while we can. <laughs> is there an Alethea behind me? Yep, there she is. Hi, Lily. Got an African serval. We've seen all bobcats so far. Hi, Alethea. Are you chasing birds? Got these tiny, cute little, I call them Disney birds. They're like the size of maybe an egg at the biggest, and they're small and yellow and super magical. And they're all over this enclosure, so I'm sure that's a real fun game for Alethea. Uh, Amanda, I don't think the enrichment group is doing Valentine's Day theme this year. Um, pretty much, I think they had to pour most of their energy into the big game. Every year we don't do every single holiday. We kind of have to pick and choose just based off of the amount of time that the volunteers have to make things, the amount of time. I mean, most of that stuff Afton and I can't put in without Carol or Jamie, and so that gets really tricky trying to work around if, you know, they'll be here or not. Oh, she's going for something. What's in there, Lily? I want... <laughs> A few weeks ago, I watched Alethea chase a butterfly for like 15 minutes, and it was hysterical. 
What you going after? I wish I could show you one of those little birds. There's also one that hangs out at the feeding lockout for big vacation rotation. And you can usually see them there. We call them very brave dumb birds up there because there's usually tigers eating in those enclosures. Now you guys know why Alethea had to be dewormed last month because she is just catching lizards and birds and probably frogs and anything else she can find. <laughs> she is one of our youngins, so it makes sense. Oh, there went the magic bird. You's going to get that bird, aren't ya? Oh, she's... Poor baby, I know. Your owner's fully declawed you so she can't climb trees. Oh my gosh. She... <laughs> she's definitely hunting a bird. What are you doing? Whoa! Where'd that bird go? <laughs> I agree, you are supposed to eat whatever you want on vacation. <laughs> Alethea has taken that to heart. So funny. Well, you guys can try to watch Alethea. I'm not sure if the camera is functioning or not. <laughs> I feel like every time I pull up any of our cameras lately, they're always on highlights. I don't know what's going on with that. But you can find a list of every single camera here if you go to bigcatcams.com. Yes, sadly, Alethea and quite a few of our other cats that are here on property were all declawed prior to being rescued from either private ownership or breeding facilities. People think that declawing a cat will make them less aggressive. It usually just creates more of a biting issue. They get aggressive in other ways and they mark their territory by scratching a lot of the time and when they can't do a lot of the scratching then they do the biting and the peeing on everything and <laughs> it's not good all right well we are at our finale we just have to find him we'll end with a manny monday hopefully he's being zen in this den over here Handsome. Hi, kiddo. I love that you like this den again. This one's much easier for me to see you. Oh, he looks so sleepy. Happy Manny Monday, sir. I must have got here just deep enough into his nap. Look at that noggin, though. And <laughs> look at that noggin. I watched Encanto for the first time last week and just cried and cried when I saw the jaguar show up. Like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I have one of those in my daily life too. Mr. Manny. Mr. Manny, thanks for the kisses. Thanks for the kisses. Oh my word. That isn't scary at all. Dad not terrifying at all. Now you're all sandy. Look at us. Now you're all sandy. Yeah. Now you're all sandy. Thanks for showing your belly. Yeah. We won't 
bother you for too long. I won't bother you for too long, Mr. Amazing. Mr. Amazing. Well, thank you very much to everybody who um, either donated on the live today or asked questions or helped answer questions in the comments. I really appreciate that. Thank you for sharing these, tagging your friends and family. If you came in late, we um, started way back with Jasmine and we celebrated with Val and worked our way around the Bobcats, some of the Bobcats. And you can rewatch this at bigcattv.com. Don't forget, there are two eBay auctions going on right now. Check your email, because we emailed everybody who has signed up to get those alerts for our eBay auctions yesterday. And the other update I have is that we are halfway to our $1,000 goal for our float.org campaign. So we've still got a ways to go, and those shirt designs of Priya Tiger are available until February 20th. So I'd really love to see us not only reach that goal, but crush it. We crushed it the first time we ever did a float um, campaign, so I would love for Priya to get that same love. <laughs> so thank you guys so much. I hope you have a great start to your week. I am volunteering tomorrow, so probably no live unless we do anything random and extra. So um, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me on a Monday morning. Hopefully this made it a little bit better for you. <laughs> and I will see you guys soon. Take care, everybody.